Have you noticed that some children come into your service and they're already heightened? And then we mention it to their families and their families say, no, they don't show these behaviors at all at home. I want to introduce you to a part of the brain called the reticular activating system. The reticular activating system is like a gatekeeper to our brain. It tells us how much sensory information to take from our world around us and up into our brain. And some children or some adults, it will work quite smoothly. So I have some sensory information and it will just drip me what I need. The sights, the sound, the smells, the tastes. But then you might find that you might have a sensory filter like mine where it just dumps it all out all at the same time. Your brain feels overwhelmed, overloaded. It's too loud. It's too bright. Or you might have some situations where it's just not giving enough sensory information. You're feeling quite bored quite unmotivated because we're just getting drip fed sensory information this can show why some children have difficulty with managing their arousal levels they're heightened and their heart rate's really high or their heart rate's really low and their arousal is low hard to motivate hard to get up and get going the reticular activating system is what we need to control our arousal our energy our sleep our appetite our mood, our focus. So it's really important that when we're looking at our sensory environment, is it the sights, the sounds, the smells that are escalating them? How can we moderate it? How can we adapt it? So an example today was a little one was getting quite escalated at snack time. At snack time, there's a lot more sensation. We've got more people in the space, more smells, more tastes, more proprioception from crunching and it actually sent him heightened after snack time he was really escalated in his body didn't know what to do with it he started throwing objects around the environment rolling himself on the floor he started to seek rough and tumble play with his peers wrestling in amongst his peers his body his reticular activating system was flooding his body with too much sensory information to the point that his sympathetic nervous system his fight or flight system started to kick in and that's why we're seeing the rough and tumble behaviors and the erratic throwing fight type behaviors what we did in this moment was we had to settle his reticular activating system down. We had to filter his sensory brain, his sensory information for him. So what we did in that moment is we got out what's called a lycra tunnel. Now a lycra tunnel is a big, long, stretchy piece of fabric. So he crawled into that tunnel and while he could still give his body the proprioception that it needed, it took away some of the sound. And it filtered out some of the light because inside the fabric tunnel, it's darker, quieter, more muffled. We are helping him with his sensory filter rather than him running around the classroom escalated. Another great resource that you can try is a billabo chair. They're like a tortoiseshell shaped spinning chair that when the sensory information becomes too much, children get louder in the space more sun is beaming through the windows, smell of kitchen is coming into the space, we can do a billabo chair, we can do it in the space, but ideally we'd move it to a more shaded, shadowy part of the room, or we'd take it outside into a quieter decking area. We are trying to help that reticular activating system filter it, because if we get the reticular activating system flooded with sensory information all the time, the brain goes into fight or flight, where if we control it, we lower the lighting, lower the sound, have predictability, calm down the energy of the space, we can then settle out of fight or flight and our parasympathetic nervous system can switch on, calm and focus the body I have a lot more ideas on sensory spaces, how we can add more proprioception and vestibular into your program. Just be sure to reach out and I'm here to help.